Good afternoon, um, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Scott Morishige. I'm the Executive Director of FOCUS, which is a membership, a member, membership and advocacy organization for health and human service nonprofits. Um, thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on the bills before you today. Um, specifically, I wanted to um, provide further information on a recent initiative that FOCUS has been centrally involved in called Haleo Malama, which is a joint initiative that began roughly um, a little under a year ago um, between HUD, um, the city and county, the State Homeless Programs Office, the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness, and the VA, as well as Oahu's homeless service providers, including IHS, as well as Waikiki Health, and many others. Uh, FOCUS role in the Haleoma Lama Initiative is to be the data collector um, and data analysis hub for information collected to this joint effort. The effort is really largely focused on um, increasing the level of knowledge and understanding that we have regarding homeless individuals in our community so that based on data, we can better craft um, better programs and policies to help this um, population. Since um, March, we've implemented um, assessments I believe the managing director had referred to um, in her testimony. Um, island-wide of roughly 830 homeless individuals and families across the island. Um, based on the data, what we found is about a third of these individuals, 32% um, or 271 um, individuals, indicate a need for permanent supportive housing, such as Housing First, which is not just housing, but it's housing as well as very intensive support services. Um, of these individuals, they're very heavily concentrated in the downtown Honolulu and Waikiki areas, around 71% of them. Um, reside in those communities. Um, to just give an example of the vulnerability of this population, what we've found from our data is looking at those individuals in that PSH category, 100% of them report a disabling condition that prevents them from being able to work. Um, about 78% of them have been victims of violent <coughs> attacks on the street since becoming homeless. Around 70% of them have been victim victimized by their friends or family who have taken their possessions once these individuals have become homeless on the street. About 95% of them indicate um, some type of substance use um, need. So as you can tell, you know, this population is very highly vulnerable and has both medical as well as you know, substance use issues that require very specialized um, treatment. Another thing we wanted to point out is based on the data, we are also seeing um, these individuals have been um, on the street for a very long period of time. Of those in the PSH category, um, the average length of time that they've been unsheltered, so not in an emergency shelter, but unsheltered on the street is eight years. Um, and their average age is about 61 years old. So these are older individuals who've been living unsheltered on the street for a very long time with very um, you know, severe needs. Um, Another thing that FOCUS has been involved um, in, in this effort, in addition to collecting the assessment data, is we actually also track the emergency shelter vacancy rate data that the managing director also referred to. Um, so based on this data, what we found is right now, um, there's about, like she mentioned, uh, 54 emergency shelter bed spaces currently available in the um, Honolulu and Waikiki area. But those are primarily bed spaces for individuals. The emergency um, shelter spaces for families are largely filled. I mean, in fact, IHS's um, Women and Family Shelter is always filled when we receive the vacancy report data from them. And then many times they're actually above capacity. So the, where there is um, shelter bed spaces for individuals, um, there's about 54 bed spaces on average um, in the Honolulu Waikiki area, and the remainder is largely in uh, Waipahu at the Lighthouse Outreach Shelter, which averages about 40 open bed spaces on average, as well as um, Waianae Community Outreach's um, Kealoho West Oahu Shelter, which averages about 35 bed spaces available on average. Um, I just wanted to you know, be able to share this um, information with the council as you're considering the policies before you today. And just to keep in mind that, um, you know, although there are many new resources coming available um, to assist this population, such as the State Housing First contract, the um, SAMHSA grant for Housing First, as well as City Housing First efforts, a lot of these programs are fairly new and just beginning to launch now. So it's going to take some time for them to really be up and running where they'll be able to meet the needs of the individuals that we're serving. Um, so I just wanted to share this information with you and I'd be happy to answer if you guys have any questions. Thank you.
Yeah. Members, any questions? Council Member Fukunaga. Thank you. You know, um, I appreciate Focus uh, data collection efforts, and I'm curious as to whether or not you have uh, the data broken down by smaller sub-regions. For example, Waikiki versus downtown Chinatown versus Ala Moana, et cetera. We, we have it broken down to um, East Honolulu from um, P.E. Koi Street to Hawaii Kai, and then I think um, what we consider downtown Honolulu is Pequot up to Salt Lake. So that's the best that we can isolate it down right now. Um, if you break down that 71% that I mentioned, um, the bulk of those are actually located in the um, downtown urban Honolulu area. Um, uh, many, many of the individuals surveyed are in the uh, River Street, Fort Street Mall area. That's, that would be my conclusion as well. And so when, you know, when we talk about the 71%, I would imagine that most of the ones that you are referring to are the ones in the downtown Chinatown area because they do tend to be older. You know, many of them do have substance abuse and mental health challenges. And so that is one reason why you know, much of our efforts at the local level have focused on the kind of housing and the kinds of programs and services that would be appropriate for that population. Whereas my sense is that in the Waikiki area, some of the population that you're, you know, really talking about in Waikiki and other parts of East Honolulu is different from that downtown Chinatown population. I think in, in general, the number of homeless individuals that we've surveyed from the Waikiki area um, has been very limited in comparison to the number of individuals okay. surveyed in um, downtown urban Honolulu. Okay. But many other individuals also migrate between the two communities. Yes, we know that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Menor. Just for clarification, you know, uh, council members are concerned that if these kinds of bills, the civil rights bills, are passed, that um, you know the homeless population impacted by these bills need to have shelter spaces to go to. So, from your perspective, again, for clarification, if if the bills that we are considering were enacted into law, do you feel that um, there are adequate shelter spaces? That could, you know, for these homeless individuals? I think, well, there are um, shelter spaces that are available right now. Like um, I mentioned, um, they're primarily um, bed spaces for individuals. And the majority of that are vacancies at the IHS um, Sumner Street Men's Shelter. Um, I think even if um, these laws were implemented, that those bed spaces would probably continue to have similar vacancy rates for various reasons. Um, because again, I think the population being impacted is you know, very vulnerable with very severe needs, some of which might not be able to be um, adequately addressed within the structured nature of a shelter environment, but might be able to be um, better addressed through outreach or linkages with you know, with other types of programs. So I think even if these laws are implemented, um, and while these bed spaces exist, I don't think that it would necessarily follow that those individuals would then move into those shelter spaces. Okay, thank you. Members, any further questions? Thank you very much.